Hey guys, Wordy Nerd here, back with another video. Today, we'll be looking at some useful Leo contraptions that'll get you scoring more points in FLL. Sorry that I haven't been posting for a while. I've been working on a pretty big project that I'm excited to show you next week or the week after that. But for now, let's get into this video. Before we get to any explaining, let's take a look at what we have here. First, we have two aligning jigs, both for different purposes. We have a simple linear actuator. We have two gearboxes, a worm gear drive and your standard issue gearbox. We have a claw mechanism, and we have a one-way gate mechanism with a piece that I'll show you later. These are all very useful contraptions, in my opinion, for FLL, which can get you to scoring more points in less time. For these contraptions, I would recommend not building exactly to what I have, but building your own things. If, you, if this video gets enough likes and enough support, I will post a part two video, which I'll show you even more clever contraptions that can get you to scoring more points in FLO. Enough dilly-dallying now, let's go on to seeing what these contraptions are. This is the home base for last year's FLO mission table, FLO City Shaper. But that's not what you're really here for. You're here for these. These are aligning jigs. I've done an FLL Passive Techniques video on these, which I, will, which I hope you will watch, which has a link in the description. Essentially how these work is you can align it against a wall or a corner, like this. And as it forms a 90 degree angle, it also forms about a 45 degree angle right here. That means that you can align your robot here, and without having to turn, you can point directly at a mission you want to go through which allows for more accuracy because it's less turning, and it allows for a faster robot because you don't have to turn, which oftentimes are very slow to keep it precise. This is the second FLL aligning jig. This is for when you need a straight jig. As you can see, it aligns and is pretty sturdy. This will be able to support your robot in FLL, and it will be able to get it a good boost to go off the wall. It can also be used in other places like here, but this doesn't have a back wall, so I would not recommend it. This is the first contraption that I showed you today. To build it, essentially what you'll need is a bunch of these O pieces, or really any Legos, in the form of this. Simply place it on along here, and it's solid. Your robot will be able to push off the mission base with a good accuracy and fast timing. If you like the previous contraption, I hope you'll go to my video on passive techniques called aligning jigs and watch that video where I go into more depth about what aligning jigs are. But for now, let's move on to the next one. This is a very simple rack and pinion linear actuator. A linear actuator might sound like a confusing term, but it really is quite simple. It is any mechanism that converts rotary motion, such as this pinion gear, into linear motion, which is the linear rack. This is a toothed rack, so the pinion gear, the gear right here, is able to spin it. If you would like to see this used in FLL, you can check out my video about last year's FLL City Shaper Mission Run, in which I scored 385 points. I will also show a short clip of that after this to show you how I used a linear actuator in that. But for now, let's get down to the, what this contraption is. Essentially, your motor or something like that would turn this pinion gear, and that would in turn make the rack go in a linear motion which is really good for lifting things. And there's a lot of lifting in FLL, so I would highly recommend this. This is my go-to linear actuator besides pneumatics. And if you have half beams right here, it'll provide a great support and it will be very sturdy. Although this does mean that the side holes, axles right here, won't be able to be used, but you can still do a lot with this hole right here as I will show in the clip that I'm about to play from last year's FLL City Shaper mission run. The rest of the contraptions I showed in the beginning will be saved for a part two video, but I think I've saved the best for last because now I will show you gearboxes. But it gets more interesting than this because there's more to gearboxes than just gears. This is a simple gearbox. I've used an O piece, and if you watch my videos on an introduction to FLL gears, I talked about gear ratios. Spinning the smaller one will make the larger one turn less. If I spin this one rotation, this one does not go full rotation. However, it has more power. Same for this worm gear drive. If I spin it like this, it will give a lot of power, but lower speed. However, if I spin this large gear and spun the small gear, 
You see, one rotation of this large gear makes the small gear go in many rotations. It's very fast, except for the fact that it's very not powerful, or it doesn't have as much power as a higher gear ratio. This worm gear drive is spun with a worm gear, and since it's like a screw, it can spin it without any backlash, meaning that you can't spin this gear, but you can spin the worm gear, which gives this a lot of power. This is ideal for stronger mechanisms, such as lifting heavy weights, because this, if you were to use this, it could slip, and it could end up spinning the input instead of the input spinning the output. But with a worm gear, there's no backlash. This cannot go back. Only the worm gear can spin it. So your input will always be sending out the output, and your output won't be spinning the input, which is something you don't want when lifting heavy weights. And now I will show you what I think is the most interesting part of the video, how you can combine some of these contraptions to make amazing mechanisms to help you in FLL. Now, you might think these two contraptions look familiar, and they should because I mentioned it in this video. But what if I told you I could make your robot lift very heavy weights with these two contraptions and the addition of just four more? I'll show you how to do that now. First, we'll want to remove the black axle from this piece. Next, push this axle forward more and place in this yellow stopper. After that, make sure your gear doesn't fall out, first of all. And then, place it back in. Now, this is really wobbly, even if the gear connection is in there. So what we're going to do is we're going to find the side without the input valve. And then we're going to simply connect these two pieces. And I would highly recommend getting some of these 90 degree gear joints. Because as I mentioned in my best pieces for FLL video, they're one of the most useful pieces you can have. Then take your axle, preferably four holes long or longer. And then you just place it in like there. If you really wanted it to be more stable, you could find some more of the stopper pieces and then you could just place them in the ends, like so. Now, essentially what you have is a worm gear driven linear actuator. And as we talked about, worm gears are extremely powerful. So, so is this linear actuator. As you can see, it moves very slow. With the motor, this will be faster, but with the hand, it's pretty slow. This is really good for lifting heavy weights that need to go straight up, especially in missions like the into orbit heavy weight lifting, which was a challenge for many teams and they didn't do it. But with the simple attachment of this onto your robot and with the dog gear system, it's already vertical. So you could have it like this and have a direct vertical up and down with a simple mechanism that can, comprises of this worm gear box and this linear actuator. I would also like to thank builder 35 and HAL 9000 for inspiration on this mechanism. I might make a video on this mechanism alone and talk about how it works. If that interests you, just let me know by leaving a like, subscribing, and hit the notification bell to never miss another video. Also, be sure to check out my website where I'll show all of these contraptions and how to build them in step-by-step -step pictures that are very detailed. I will be uploading that soon. For now, I'll see you later, and I hope to see you when I, my big project comes out that I've been working on. Bye!